Have you ever plugged in your Arduino and just wondered what it was doing? Have you ever tried plugging bigger loads into your Arduino and just couldn't figure out how? Well then don't delay, buy today. For just one easy payment of $5, you can get SE's transistor shield for your Uno and Mega. That's right, one easy payment of $5, plus shipping and handling taxes extra. Silly intro aside, I am trying to use my partnership with PCBWay to um, make some stuff that might be useful for the uh, community. So I present to you my transistor shield. So really what the problem I was trying to solve is that you can only really pull 40 milliamps of current per each one pin on a typical Arduino. And uh, sometimes you want to pull more. You want to you know deal with bigger loads. That's why... You know, my intro showed one of these, for example, a little 3-watt LED. Um, also, I think in total on this whole board, you're only supposed to pull about 200 milliamps for the whole thing. So generally what you would do is you would add, you know, a, uh, a transistor off the board and then power your devices from there. But what I did is I just put a transistor for every single uh, digital pin on the Arduino Uno or uh, you know the set up here for the Mega as well and so uh, also I've broken out all of your analog pins here the V in the 3v3 the five grounds all all those things they're just on extra rows so you can put you know male and female headers if you want or two sets of male headers whatever you'd like the other thing I added is LEDs uh, these LEDs are going through a 1k ohm resistor, so they should only take 1 milliamp each, uh, and it'll tell you which pin is active doing something. So I've got a little sketch here that I'll use in just a moment to demonstrate, um, but if you can see here, all the LEDs are on, and they're just shifting through. I don't know if that's too bright for you to see, but yeah, there it goes, just shifting through. So you actually know what the uh, pins are doing. Now I find the 1K resistor and the red LED combo uh, is a little bit too bright. So, you know, you could even put, you know, uh, higher resistance, like maybe 4.7K would probably work and it'd still be uh, visible, but not quite as bright. And the big deal obviously is these transistors. These are 2N3904 uh, equivalents and the great thing about this board is it's so tiny that you can get 10 or I'll have to check maybe more uh, for the $5 uh, cost on a place like PCBWay and you can buy hundreds of these components. This is just uh, 1K resistors here. Uh, I forgot what size for the base uh, resistors and then um, these 2N3904s. So you can literally get like all of this for like under 10 bucks plus the shipping. So. That's really not too bad. On top of that, I've broken out, um, there's ground, five volts, and the V in. So let's say you wanna run a load like this guy, for example. This is a big LED. So if you wanna run this thing, this is a 12 volt LED. Uh, what you can do is you can power this and the V in from the same 12 volts, and then they'll just share the ground. So you can tie your ground up on this one. Or if you have a beefy 5 volt power supply, for example, to feed a whole bunch of relays, um, then you can just tie in directly to the 5 volt here on these terminals. So I think this is uh, quite useful. Uh, let me show you the diagram that'll uh, let you hook things up, and we'll go from there. So generally speaking, when you take your digital pin, uh, let's just go D13 uh, if you want. Uh, you'll usually want to, you know, drive like an LED directly from that to ground. So that doesn't change. If you want to run a small load, that's not a problem. But if you want to run a bigger load, the way you used to usually usually do it is you just break this out into your breadboard and you put it in a on a transistor like so, transistor to ground, and then you would take your higher load, you would give it, let's say, you know, five volts, and then you put a resistor, and then you'd put, you know, a big LED. And so that's kind of 
what you would do. Um, but then you'd have, you know, wire from D13 to your transistor, transistor uh, to ground, and then your five volts, power, whatever. It just becomes messy. You know, this thing is all self-contained. So all you do in that case is you grab your high-powered LED, for example, and you give it uh, power, so plus five volts, and then you give it a little, you know, resistor of whatever. Uh, I think I use about uh, 10 ohms for these uh, three watt LEDs at five volts. I believe it's 10 ohms I use. Um, and then you would go basically to the, the new D13 pin on this here. So you would hook up right there. Uh, D13, it's labeled, it would be this one here. So you hook up the negative side of your um, LED to there, and you just tie the ground of your 5 volt supply to here, and it should work. And so now, let me show you what's so special about this by hooking up, well, I guess way too many LEDs. So I just organized this for it to be a little bit uh, clearer, but there's all my LEDs here. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 for all the digital pins on the Uno. Uh, by the way, this shield should fit a Mega as well. You're just going to be missing, you know, the extra pins there. Um, if In case you didn't know, I think all the Uno shields fit the Mega. But anyways, that's not the point. Um, I've got uh, 10 ohms of resistance here divided by four resistors so they don't burn. Um, and that's a common power for all of them. So they'll all be going through this uh, 10 ohm resistor. And so I won't get maximum brightness, which is fine because I'm just going to get blinded. But if I cared enough to fill this board uh, filled with resistors, each of these could have their own separate power supply. And then you could literally run a whole ton of LEDs from this thing here. Uh, at full brightness. Um, now you are limited uh, by the track size on here, so I wouldn't push anything past you know 250 milliamps, maybe half an amp or so uh, each channel, um, because I kept it small. But if I made a bigger shield, which is you know, you know possible future expansion, then we can go high current. We can go actually MOSFETs instead of these guys. But that's not the point. So there you go. All the LEDs are on, and you'll see they'll slowly sequence off one at a time and I didn't even need to turn them on to know it would work because you can see the little uh, status LEDs here and the code is just rolling through it's doing digital writes everything high um, and then one low per cycle nothing super special uh, the only thing is if you're going to run a DC motor or a relay you want some sort of um, freewheeling diode added to it, you know, going the opposite polarity um, because these things can make inductive spikes. And I don't think you're going to kill the Arduino if there's inductive spiking, but you will probably kill the um, transistor on the board. Another thing is that uh, these things are all hand soldered. I hand soldered these just to show it's possible. If you don't feel like hand soldering, you can always order the stencil from PCBWay and you'll be able to, um, yeah, do this on a reflow soldering uh, pad or whatever. So yeah, what do you think? Sequencing high power LEDs, you can sequence um, relays and stuff. If you order one of these boards yourself, uh, link in the description, I would actually like to know what kind of stuff you're going to use it for. I'm going to keep these on hand and it's just a lot less mess when I'm trying to show people um, that they can run things like solenoids and LEDs and whatever. And um, I think I'll probably do a project pretty soon with these uh, big ones here, these big LEDs, because there's no reason why you couldn't use 12 volts because er everything that's switching here is on the ground side. So yeah, let me know what you think this is useful for uh, in the comments below. Thanks for watching.